All right, you guys. So I'm back, and today we are going to untwist, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I talked about in the last video how people use the verse, um, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But yet, they leave out the next verse in Philippians 2.13 2, that says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. They deny the Lord that bought them, that gave them the free gift of salvation and they place in their hands using the prior verse that you have to work out your own salvation when salvation is a free gift and pride they take the free gift of salvation and attribute they're working as somehow a way to maintain or obtain salvation when salvation is wholly ascribed to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay? If you didn't watch that video, please go back. I may reiterate or I may repeat some of those verses um, in this video repetition is the key to learning you may learn that you don't have to be in fear of losing your salvation because it is a free gift already given to you and to separate eternal security from Jesus the one who gave it makes it another Jesus and makes the Jesus that we obtain salvation from, it makes his death in vain. And that's why it's a damnable heresy because you, with pride, not you, I know not you watching this video, take the responsibility and the free gift into your own hands saying that it is you that obtains and maintains salvation when it was already given it is a free gift so for the for, for again wherefore second philippians 2 verse 12 wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much, but now much more in my absence. He's telling them in his absence to continue to obey and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure now second verse that they often use is Proverbs 9 10 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding but let me show you because I think I left this in my uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit video uh, slash testimony. This is where fear and trembling, not the fear and trembling that, that damns you to hell, is found in the Old Testament. Isaiah 66, verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. 
Where is the house that you built unto me? Where is the house that you built unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those, all those things have my hand made. Again, for all those things have my hand made. And all those things have been saved the Lord. But to this man while I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit that trembleth at my word. There's no pride in saying that me, my works, me boasting and the fact that my works uh, can bring me salvation. It says, poor and contrite spirit that trembleth at my word. Working out your own salvation with fear and trembling means to employ yourselves in the things which accompany salvation, not obtain, not maintain, but accompany salvation. You do the work you are called to do. You do the work that you are called to do. I talked in the last video how we have been saved unto good works. And even the works that we do have been preordained that we should walk in them. So... God gets the glory for even the good works that we do after we come to salvation. Okay? He gets, the, he gets the glory and he gets the credit for our salvation. And he gets the glory for the works that he um, preordained so that we should just walk them out. Okay? Do the work that you are to do in your generation, which God, again, has prescribed and directed to you, which is the grace, which the grace of God teaches us to do. <sighs> Titus 2.11, for the grace of God, again, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation... It shows you separate. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that deny, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing. Of that great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us, who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all our iniquity and purify unto Himself a peculiar people, <clears throat> zealous of good works. You guys, even our good works. Um, even the best of our good works are imperfect to a perfect God. And if salvation could be obtained by the works of men, Christ's death would be in vain. This is why it's a damnable heresy to tell someone that they uh, have to work to maintain salvation and obtain salvation through their good works. It says it's a free gift of God. Lest any, I mean any, not one of us should boast. Salvation is by Christ alone. It is already finished by him. And that fact, even in this exhortation, 
can never be changed. Even in that exhortation, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling does not change the fact that salvation is by Christ alone and it's already finished by him. The fear is not a slavish fear of damnation, thinking that the penalty of your sins is going to damn you to hell, because then that would be a damnable heresy, but people teach it and not know it. It is, a, it is not a slavish fear of damnation, since this would be a distrust of the power and the faithfulness of God. These people that teach that you have to obtain and maintain your salvation are in fear because they do not trust the promise that God gave them, that he gave them eternal life. And all you have to do is believe in him. They mix law with grace. They mix salvation with discipleship. They mix the first sanctification with the second sanctification. Okay? Paul is not exhorting into such fear. And it will be hypocritical seeing that he himself was so assured that the work, the good work begun in them would be performed. Again, he was exhorting them to continue it. And he was saying to them that it was God that worketh in them. That would help them to perform it. It is consistent with the highest acts. It is consistent working at your own self, soul salvation with fear and trembling. Is consistent with the highest acts of faith, faith, trust, confidence, and joy. And it is opposed to pride and the vain glory is done with a contrite heart. And you can see that most people that tell you you have to work out your own sal soul salvation uh, with fear and trembling, uh, they don't um, have any joy because they stay in a constant state of fear that they are going to lose their salvation. And all they have to do is read the next verse and they would know that God who... Uh, separated them and sanctify them the first sanctification it's not going to throw them in the trash <sighs> again it is consistent with the highest acts of faith trust confidence and joy and is opposed to pride and vainglory it intends modesty and humility those that say that they take part in their own salvation as opposed to their sanctification the second one or their discipleship have no humility and it intends modesty and humility which is what the apostle is pressing for Throughout the whole context. And he urges to a cheerful and a constant obedience to Christ with all humility of soul, but is still, but he is still ascribing it wholly to the grace of God. Fear and trembling is a solemn, reverential fear. It is solemn. It comes from a contrite heart. It's a solemn, reverential fear that stems from an adoration. An adoration and love of God. Okay? It's a healthy, reverential fear. It's a solemn, reverential fear that stems from adoration and love of God. It acknowledges that sin, that all sin, is an offense against the very nature of a holy God. So creating a sincere desire not to offend and grieve him 
but to obey. Please honor and glorify him in all that we do, setting our affections on the things above. Colossians 3.23 And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord. Romans 6, 17. But God be thanked that ye are the servants that ye were. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart. You've had a change of heart. That form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin. Being then made free from sin, being born of corruptible seed, you have been perfected forever, sanctified and perfected forever, being born of incorruptible seed. Being then made free from sin, you become the servant of righteousness it's what we want to do it's what we want to do we want to please God we want to serve him we want to obey him we want everything that we do we do it as unto the Lord okay it's a joy in that Again, it's a solemn fear that stems from adoration and the love of God. I could go into some more, but that will be a, a third video. Seeing, seeing that we are uh, uh, dead to sin and we should reckon ourselves dead to sin, okay? I'll do that in a third video. But fear, reverential fear, and trembling, reverential fear, and awe is not a damning fear that people use when they say, work out your own sal soul salvation with fear and trembling. They use that to say that if you don't take part in your salvation, you are damned to hell. Therefore, they bring in privately damnable heresies, as I talked about in the last video. Want to untwist working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, you guys? I hope this helps. Um... It's amazing how people use, they rail against uh, Paul and him teaching the gospel of grace, this dispensation. This is about to end. The age of grace is about to end. But yet they will use his words to damn you to hell, to pit fear into you when we work out our own soul salvation. We want to do things for God. We want to honor him in all that we do. What we do, we want to do it as unto him, to bring honor and glory unto him. But the problem is people take the honor and the glory and the salvation and our redemption that is ascribed to him and they put it back in their into their own hands by way of pride so that they can boast and talk about how they did so many good works to get themselves into heaven and there is no such thing the Lord will say depart from me I never knew you you worker of iniquity okay because they did not put their trust it is a distrust 
and it is a fear of losing their salvation, which God said is a free gift. And all you have to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and that God raised him from the dead, and you are saved. Again, we are talking about two separate sanctifications. We are talking about salvation, and then they're tr being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's separate. Okay, you guys, maybe I'll come back with a third video. I want to untwist this uh, damnable heresy that is taught by the false teachers, the Lord shippers, by the Muslims, by the Armenians, by I don't, you name it, it's false. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to him. No man comes to the Father but by him. We have to trust that he's going to give us eternal salvation. And if we separate eternal security from the Jesus that you know and I know, it makes it another Jesus, okay? And it makes it a damnable heresy that the false teachers are teaching, okay? Maybe I'll come back with reckoning ourselves dead. Um, and even in that, there is a joy because we are hidden in Christ. The, 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 the unseen, um, we, uh, the, the carnal mind, the carnal eyes, the carnal heart cannot receive and cannot conceive the joy and the pleasure and, uh, that we have when we are hidden in Christ. Because he has given us the free gift of salvation. And we want to give him all the glory. All the honor. And all the praise. So there's even a joy in being hidden from Christ. And the problem is the, un, the unseen. The natural man. The natural mind. The, the carnal heart. The carnal mind cannot receive that. They have to make it about themselves. Okay, it's a false teaching. I'll come back later and do it. I'll do another video, maybe later. Okay, you guys, please, please. I'll leave the scriptures below, okay? Please read them for yourselves. Okay, you guys, there's scriptures that I did not read, but I will leave them below.